Hello, and welcome to my childhood. I've always felt that my childhood was like toys caught in amber, kind of like Jurassic Park with the mosquitoes and their blood of dinosaurs. Because here is, nothing's ever changed. I've been lucky. I've been able to save everything. Today, we're going to look at the second drawer of fighting men. Fighting Men was the third thing that the Thing Maker people put out by Mattel, mid-60s. It was really cool. You could make three-dimensional toys. So come on over here. Take a look. Now, I did a little prep work. This was a lot messier like yesterday, but I moved some of the piles of junk. These toys literally have been in this drawer for, I don't know, maybe 45, 50 years. And these are Fighting Men. And I can't remember. We're going to take a look at them. We're going to take them out, all of them out. See, and I put a little towel down there, and that kept them from getting too gooey. Anyway, let's go in, let's go in the other room. Follow me. Follow me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because there's no room in my room. So now let's put them down on one of my mom's um, Christmas tablecloths. So this is another batch of fighting men. In a previous episode, in a previous episode, we looked at a batch of fighting men. My idea was that there was two armies of guys that I made, and they were on an idea of world domination. There was the bad guys. And then there were the worser guys. Somehow they were good guys and bad guys, but they both wanted world domination. I was inspired by like Dr. Doom. I was inspired by, I suppose, Genghis Khan. I was inspired by maybe Adolf Hitler. And I was inspired by all those guys that were like, I can take over the world. Like that would be easy, huh? Anyway, they fought to the death all the time. So, well, look at that. There's a stamp for Robin. That's not so old. You know, eek stamp. So let's take a look at these guys. Like here's a guy with no body left, but... He had the backpack from the fighting men. Can you see that? Now, I pretended that those were anti-gravity packs and they could fly around. And if you looked at the other fighting men, you noticed that I was always enhancing their strength with band-aids and tape. So that guy had a band-aid around him. In fact, that's from clear, um, that was clear wiggle stuff. And then here's another guy. This might, I can't tell. And there's another guy that's got enhancements. See, with pipe cleaners and band-aids. And then here's another guy with enhancements with... That's wire, and it's somehow glued onto him. Oh, here's a good guy. There was this really cool glue called, I think it was called goop or something back in the day, or goo. And so he's got this sort of exoskeleton. He was kind of super strong like the thing. Kaboom! And they would just fight to the death. Now, this guy's got wires in part of him, see? So he's got a wire in his arm that gives him a little more. So he had this down, boom, uh, one-arm punch. I think this might be the good guy. You know, the last one we looked at, I thought that might be the good guys. But he looks like he should be a good guy. And this guy, maybe this is him, because this might be, there was the leader of the good guys, and then he got burned up, and I took the ashes, and I put him in the mold so that he was reborn. From the ashes of the old good guy, he was reborn. <laughs> and then there's a guy, look, he's got a splint on. Oh, here's another one of those guys with an anti-gravity backpack made out of clear plastic goop. Oh, yeah, this looks like it's the good guy package, I think. I think. Again, they were so easy to fight with, and you just... They were all different. They all looked different. You could give them personalities and stuff. Oh, this guy had a hard day. Look, he's been stabbed. And then here's another guy. This guy is a little extra thick. He was tough. And then, like I said, there's a guy with more splints and more pipe cleaner, more good guys. I mean, this is just my childhood. Oh, here's a guy with a flamethrower. This guy. So the flamethrower and the backpack were the only two things I ever made because they were the only things I understood really how to use. <laughs> And then what I'd do is I'd rip off the flamethrower part and suddenly it'd be a, turn it upside down and it'd be a jetpack and they could fly all over the place. <sighs> like that jetpack in Gilligan's Island. You remember that jetpack? So these, I'm certain, the previous episode was bad guys. This is the drawer of good guys. And they've been waiting. They were separated back in the day and they're waiting for their day in the sun to resume battle. And now... Maybe they aren't going to resume battle, but at least they got to talk to you and they got to play for you and they got to be outside and be appreciated. If you had a thing maker, if you made your own toys, if you made your own storylines, if you had an imagination that just sculpted these wild epic adventures and quests, drop us a line. Just tell us in a few words or a few sentences or whatever you want. Tell me about the youth we all shared. Once we were all young and we all had creative imaginations and we created and we made things happen. We created storylines. And that's what Super Monster City is all about. It's to hold that, that, that memory dear. Again, this is for the people that want to remember stuff, the people that want to pass on stuff, and the people that just want to look at cool stuff. Because Super Monster City is where the cool stuff lives. We'll talk to you later. Thanks again. Look for our next episode. Bye-bye.